Hello everyone, this is Rita Emmett from the Chicago area in the United States through the magic of whatever we're using, talking to Tom Evans, the author of, tell us the name of your book, Tom. It's New Magic for and, a New Era. Right. So we're going to be talking about bringing magic. Tom is going to tell us today about bringing magic into our lives and the kind of magic he's talking about is going to bring us more money, more time, and more love, which I can't imagine anybody not wanting, Tom. <laughs> Tell me, how did you start this journey? You are a BBC TV engineer, and you ended up writing a book about magic. How did this happen? Well, this is, um, thank you, Rita. This is my 11th book, and thank you for turning the tables on me and being the interviewer on The Zone Show. That's really kind of you to do this, and something I want to encourage you a bit more of as well. So thank you for stepping up to the plate. Yeah, so this is my 11th book, and... Um, and last year I took on a, a coach who didn't know me. I wanted someone that was really objective to look at me, look at my business and uh, give me a little pointer of what to do next. And she looked at my portfolio of books and she said to me, Tom, he said, you never ever in all these books told your story. And I said, well, it's boring because, you know, nothing's happened. I've not been to hell and back. I've not had that sort of... Uh, been bankrupt four times or had that life-threatening illness touch wood I've just had a magical magical life um, and she said that's the story people want to hear that they're fed up of hearing how life has to be tough tell them how to make it really really simple and tell them about your journey from ex-BBC engineer into what you're doing now so that's that's kind of where the idea from the book came from you know Tom that's brilliant because many of us read books or hear speakers where they've sur like you say they've survived catastrophes and that and we think well well I've never done that I haven't been like you said to hell and back I haven't been in these horrible situations I'm just an average ordinary person and it sounds like that's who you're writing for it is and, and my hats by the way in, in the book we say my hats off to those people I'm not trying to demean what they've they've been through and and my, my sympathy is with them my, especially the ones that come back from the edge and then tell people that might have to go there how to get back again but um what happened to me I was um in my mid-40s and I was basically bored I'd been in high tech for 25 years and uh, and someone said oh you looked a bit haggard and stressed why don't you try meditating and um, so I thought well don't be stupid because uh, I haven't got time to meditate and I can't switch my mind off but I persevered with it and, um, and, I, and I learned how to meditate and then what happened was kind of weird things would happen and as an engineer I started to research them I went on various courses to find out um, how the mind works I started studying metaphysics and esoterics and I just found that so much wisdom was out there that was kind of buried. And, you know, first off, I think that religions might have buried it. And then latterly, the, the religion of science buried it because anything that doesn't fit into scientific model gets ignored. But I found that some amazing things could be done with the power of the human mind uh, in the sort of fields of creativity and healing and time bending and stretching. So the engineering, we took all this, um, I guess, um, esoteric wisdom and put it into a contemporary working context so we can benefit from it in our everyday lives and that's what the new magic is all about it's sort of it's actually the old magic but in a new context with a new level of understanding you know time I think the the, fa the the attitude you bring to it and the fact that you have this engineering background can open up more people to it because there are so many people who believe all oh, this new wave stuff it doesn't work i'll tell you a quick funny story when i was writing my first book i my son asked me how is it going and i said oh i'm, I'm afraid to finish it because i don't know what to do next i don't know how to get a book published and he said oh mom the way you live your life you'll probably um, stumble on the street and see a flyer on the ground that says looking for an author to write a book about my subject. And uh, I laughed because that is how, how my life goes. But then year, a couple of years ago when they came out with the, the Secret and the Law of Attraction, I was chatting with my son's wife about it and, our, and Rob, his name is Rob, walks along and he's a cop by the way. And you know the cop mentality of black and white? He said, the law of attraction, you don't believe that nonsense, do you? 
and his wife said, I'd like to introduce you to your mother. So he had shown this insight earlier about the way you live your life, you're gonna find a way to get published. But then when you called it something, when, when it was called, when it had a name, then he rejected it. You're talking about adding magic to people's lives in ways that they can actually have more time, you said. Yeah, and, and on, on the more time front, um, I found that what happened with me is that if you, if I was be worried about what people were thinking about what I was writing or I was thinking about a pitch for a publisher when I'm not even written the book, I'd be wasting time. And I discovered this amazing fact about the human mind or the normal human mind is that we can only have one thought at a time. So if we're thinking about, oh, what people are going to think about this, or maybe I'm not going to get published, or maybe people won't like it, we won't focus on the book itself. So it's all about getting into this lovely meditative state with our eyes open. And that's when time seems to change uh, quality. And this book, by the way, um, just before, it, we're now uh, just into March, aren't we? And uh, just before Christmas, I had the opening chapter written and the closing chapter. I always do that. I'll write the, the beginning and end of the book and then the middle has this this habit of filling itself in. And and the book was published in mid-February. So, you know, two and a half months from the first word to book physically in my hand. That's what I mean about time stretching. This is practical, real-world stuff. So in probably about two or three hours, I'll write about 3,000 words. Um, and something else magical happens, Rita, as well, as you've probably experienced, is that when I'm completely in the zone and all my attention is on the book. By the way, I, 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 um, I make appointments with my chapters, so they've got their dates in my diary. I'm making dates in my book. But what happens when I'm in that zone is I set up this thing I call an interruption barrier, and the phone doesn't ring and interrupt me until I'm done. Oh, my Lord, that's magnificent. Magnificent. Mm. I would encourage any of our listeners to look up the reviews for your book. What do you think about the reviews you're getting, Tom? Are you surprised or delighted? Or I was one brought one brought tears to my eyes the other day, and you know you you probably as a, as an author yourself, you know, in the early days of um, of, of getting a book out there, uh, a lot of the first reviews that come in are for your, your friends and your family and your your super yes, fans yep. and this sort of stuff and that's the natural thing we all want to do we want to get a bit of feedback and then you know you get some so they might they might be what you call false five star reviews you know because uh, your friends that wouldn't be friends they didn't give you five star reviews of course <laughs> so um so but i'll get in some amazing reviews there. i'll just show i'll read one with you i'll share one with you here uh, what's it say here uh, a delightful book with an emotional buzz from a magical writer and this person here was really, really, um, I think they were touched by the fact I shared my story uh, from the outset as well, which is just amazing. And there's one just below here. How about this one? Fireworks for the mind. And it says here, um, real, the real fireworks fly up, taking your sights to the heavens and beyond in a glorious explosion of understanding as to all those things you couldn't quite uh, grass and just fall into place he makes it so easy read the book get the upgrade and that's from someone i don't know which is just amazing oh. <laughs> <laughs> i understand what you're saying you expected that to be from one of your dearest friends right and when it's from somebody you don't know you go oh people i don't know are reading my book yay <laughs> exactly yeah yeah and and then the, the, the most beautiful thing really is then when you get um you know, it's it, well, it's it's hard enough to write a book. People say, don't they nowadays? Or well, I must admit, I find it quite easy these days. But um, the the most difficult thing for writers when they've written a book is then to publicise it. And so, what we really want is our readers to become our sales force and tell their friends um, to buy the book or to buy books as, as gifts for their friends too. And uh, and that seems to be happening already, just over the last uh, two or three weeks, which is a lovely, great start. How fabulous! How fabulous! Yeah. Well, Tom. What would you say to someone who said, oh, I've always wanted to do such and such, uh, maybe, you know, learn to play the piano, travel, go back to college, start a business, write a book, but I never have the time? Well, you know what? Um, it's an illusion that time is fixed. It's an illusion even that time has a, a forward arrow. And for every person I've ever come across, you'll always find there's about half an hour or an hour of wasted time in their day, you know, either watching soaps or playing computer games or whatever. And I would recommend that you just look at, do a little time audit, work out where the time leaks are coming and where the time bandits are coming from. And seeing that procrastination when you do kind of nothing and you, you, you waste time, see that as 
an example that you're putting something in the way of really expanding and learning and it doesn't take very long just to get a new skill on board if you just spend something like 20 to 30 minutes every day learning something new after 21 days that skill will become new whether that is playing a guitar or a piano you should say learning a new language and as soon as you do that some magic comes into your life because one you'll connect with new people two the stuff that you learn will open new doors from you for you and you'll find then that slowly slowly the old treadmill doesn't isn't so hard to to walk down anymore and instead of pushing water uphill you go with the flow and new doors and new opportunities open for you by the fact you've taken on board to learn something new and get out of that kind of comfort zone i know we're just we're just coming out of winter in the northern hemisphere and we kind of close down don't we and hibernate and all this sort of stuff and so especially in spring i love the idea of springing forward and learning something new and in fact what i do every year in spring is normally start writing a book this year i've actually ended up um, publishing the book by spring which is kind of different but uh, it means that i know that this year will be different from the last and the last year was different from the one before that because every every year i took on a new challenge i did learn something new and when i write a new book i do write apart from writing it about a different topic i write in a new style i take on a new um, genre perhaps and uh, and really improve myself as a writer by by doing something kind of different and just slightly scary too you know tom i i want to ask a question that's a little bit off this book i took your online course and when you talked about writing a book in spring or or publishing a book in spring in your online course that i took one of the things you said is find what time of year is best for you to be creative Mm -hmm. or do you be sort of dormant i can't remember the word you used times that we need to be quiet and let things germinate um how does that apply to this this um the magic here well this time what i'm going to do is um i i, I really didn't plan to write the book um uh, this time it just arrived and someone um online put up um, a competition to um to write and submit a book by the 6th of March so I thought oh I could do that because um, my birthday's on the 7th of March and that'd be a really nice target to have the book written um, so I could enter it for this uh, this competition with this publisher uh, who writes who was, was publishing exactly in, in my genre so that was my plan but what happened to me is the book arrived much earlier than I thought it was going to be so uh, you know by, by mid-February it was kind of finished and edited. I'd finished it by the end of January, virtually, and had it edited by mid mid February. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm not going to wait for this competition. Anymore. I'm just going to publish it and see what happens. And nowadays, if you publish a book for the Kindle, um, within 24 hours, it's available worldwide. And then these reviews started coming in. Uh, I've now uh, got the print version of the book ready. Um, that's available in the UK as we speak right now, and worldwide it'll be ready in about two or three weeks. So um, all that's happened is that the books t time shifted a little bit. The books come forward. Uh, it seems to be reviewed and accepted very nicely. So I'm going to use spring for a slightly different activity this year. Instead of using spring to write the new book, I'm going to use spring as my promotional period and just kind of experiment with time and see what happens and and this thing with time and getting into natural time is an experiment it's about finding you know are you are you a creative person in the morning or you're uh, a lark or an owl that likes working in in the evening i find that the certain times of the moon phase that works well for me too and this year i'm going to try an experiment with marketing uh, in spring to see what happens see see whether a different pattern um, comes out with a different outcome well, the symbolism is kind of cool, isn't it? There's growth in spring, there's new growth, and that's when people will be introduced to your new ideas. I love that. I think that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also there's there's co like cosmic energy is coming into play as well. You know, we, we, I'd love to see over the next hundred years astrology and astronomy coming together and merging and finding that there actually is a bit of um, science in astrology and for the astrologers to find out there's some great science coming out from the cosmologists too. Very cool, very cool. Um, your book, New Magic for a New Era, helps people move towards the life they dreamed of. Do you feel like you're living the life you've dreamed of, Tom? No, I don't, because I couldn't dream about having a life as good as this. So I didn't even know it was possible to have a life as good as this. 
Um, and I didn't know that the things I'm doing nowadays were even possible. So when I was this board engineer, board IT consultant 10 years ago, I didn't know that um, I could heal with a touch. I could, I didn't know I could heal a budgie over Skype. I didn't know that um, uh, I could... You'll tell that story. I know, I didn't know I could change the speed of time. I didn't know that I could see auras. I didn't know that... Um, uh, didn't didn't know that I could tap into future memories. I didn't, didn't know the mechanics of light bulb moments, and that if you want an idea uh, straight off the top of your head, you don't have to wait for it to come along. There's ways to encourage them to come along. So I didn't know all of these things, and that's what I've been writing about now. So to answer your question, I'm not living a life that I dreamed about because you could couldn't have a dream as wild as the one I've had. Ah. Uh. Magic. This is magic. We are talking magic. Well, you did talk about healing a budgie over Skype. I know. <laughs> it just jumped out at me. And also, I wanted to ask, uh, can you give more help for people when, who would love to encourage their ideas? You say ideas come along, you learn to encourage them. Yeah, well, I think the thing to, to realize is that um, when we think about thoughts, um, it's kind of thought that all the thoughts that we have in our head are ours, but they're not. A good percentage of thoughts don't come from our heads. A lot of thoughts come from our uh, other parts of our neurology. We get thoughts from the heart. We get thoughts from the gut. We get gut feelings. We get, you know, we we, we fall in love with things. We don't like things. We can be lukewarm about things. But we also get thoughts that come from outside our heads, from what's called the collective consciousness. And these thoughts have a slightly different tonal quality and they come in in less than a second so when you get those flashes of inspiration that that go against your thought stream it pays good dividends to pay attention to them and what happens is if you don't act on these ideas and sometimes you get reminded maybe about two or three times about an idea either in a sign or in a dream or in in, in these flashes of inspiration if you don't act upon an idea someone else will pick it up and two years later you'll see that idea that you had being manifested by somebody else so what I encourage people to do is that when those wild ideas come against the thought stream out of nowhere sometimes when you're out walking or in the shower or something like that act on them do something with them bring them into the physical plane and that's magic in action I think many people have had that happen where they've had the idea and then a few years later they say I could have been rich if I did something with that. exactly yeah well I I too am living a life better than I ever, ever dreamed I would. But I, I remember back when things were so bad. What do you say to the person listening, listening to this who might feel hopeless, who might feel, I don't have what it takes to be able to do the magic that Tom Evans is talking about? You know what? I wrote the, I wrote the book for these people. So that's, that's the first thing I want to say. But the thing is that, 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 that no matter how bad life gets, there is a learning in adversity and there's a learning in opportunity as well so it's, it's, there's only two events two types of events in my book one is where life is tough and one one is where life is rich and rewarding and if life is tough what you say is thank you thank you for the lesson tell me what it is I need to learn and you'll be presented with the learning opportunity to take you out of that place and if life is great you also say thank you so no matter what the type of event is the response is thank you and if you thank uh, for riches coming your way more things I don't mean physical riches like cash just you know, the riches in terms of resources and and fantastic contacts like you Rita more great people turn up and if you thank the world for the adversity and you say what do I need to learn then you'll find the learning and you'll find a route out and if you do nothing at all but just take 10 minutes of me time and meditation every day just let the mind go quiet because if your mind is really really noisy you won't see the signs you won't see um, that those offers of help that are out there and, I'm, and because I believe in this so much that 10 minutes of me time people say I don't know how to make my mind go quiet on my website in the in the go to meditations there is an absolutely free meditation for 10 minutes called be calm I don't even want your email address I want the whole world to be a bit calmer because I think then we believe in we're living in a much, much more fantastic world and and we'll repeat it at the end but tell them your um, website now so those are people who are eager to get over there thank you guys it's www.tomevans.co just.co I couldn't afford the M for the dot com 
<laughs> Too bad. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we we are talking about really changing lives. And Tom, I feel that sometimes something moves us to a new path. This interview might move people to buy it or t to even go to the library if they can't afford it. Get a copy of New Magic for a New Era. And that can be leading them to a whole new journey in their lives. What about people who feel that, oh, I, I'm just not lucky in love. I just, you know, love is for the strong and the lucky and that's not me. What would you say to those people who just don't have good, they, they, their life seems to be filled with, with negative toxic people, not good positive people. What's going on here? Well, I don't use the I don't use the phrase law of attraction. I find I find the word law quite a strong word. I think there's more like a phenomenon of att attraction. So it's more a, a, a tendency than a law because the word law just sounds really hard, doesn't it? And a bit of a bit yes. old world, yeah. So, but what happens is um, if you if you don't love yourself, if you're not in love with yourself, and I don't mean narcissistically, if you're you're not in love with yourself, then you won't get people around you who want to love you so the first route to getting love and being loved and being in love is to find self-love and again I put a free meditation on my website um, about attracting a soulmate and about allowing your heart to warm up and I want so many people to do this so I made that freely available as well and you'll find that in the actually in the blog section that is so but um, so I, I, I kind of want the whole world just to chill out warm up a little bit uh, do a big group hug but without being a bit not not being new agey just to, to there's so many things not great about the world I've been given so many gifts so I've decided to make a lot of them freely available um, to to help people get back on path again so my, my advice to somebody that hasn't got love in their world is to find ways they can love themselves more and, I, and actually I think it's the fourth chapter in the book so just so you know the, the chapter order goes money time thought and then love uh, and these are really practical magical chapters because they're barometers of how well our life is going so if you've got enough money flow I don't mean by being mega rich and having tens of millions of dollars in the bank just enough flow so no matter what outflow you've got you've always got five or ten percent more inflow that's the perfect position to be in and it's using money as an energy uh, to, to do things in your world if you've got enough time it's a barometer that you're, ba you're balancing the hours and the minutes and the seconds if you've got your thoughts in order and so you're not in that internal chatter all the time and the oh woe is me and and what am I going to do tomorrow and I'm worried about the past if you just focused on the now it's a great sign that you're in flow and when all these things happen you can start to love yourself and find that just the perfect people you need in your life I don't just mean soulmates but just the right people you want to work with just turn up it's just a phenomenal way to be oh this is fabulous Tom um, let me ask doesn't it seem that some people make their lives more difficult for them and yeah I, I yeah. often wonder why yeah that's interesting because I, I kind of explored that as well there's a book on on cult, uh, the, sorry there's a yeah I've kind of explored that as well there's a chapter on path uh, that explores that term karma and a lot of people misuse the word karma to talk about you know like there's some sort of retribution if you haven't got enough brownie points then uh, you, have, you have to go back to uh, the pearly gates and you have to come back and do it all over again and this sort of stuff and I don't and my version of karma is different karma is just the collective learnings in your life and so um, uh, if you if you think that um, if you've got guilt and you think that life has got to be hard then life will be hard and I was raised a Roman Catholic you know and we got that concept of original sin but I've not seen a baby born with sin I haven't seen a baby that's got sin written all over it when it's born so some of these things are superimposed on us by by religion and by education and by our parents maybe they were brought up that way but my view is that it's time now for us to change um, that idea that life has to be tough and life has to be hard so if you're if you're having a hard life and that's been the journey so far my message just is that that doesn't have to be the way to be and I'm not sort of sitting in some sort of ivory tower talking about this you know I came from a really um, poor background one of seven kids and and I just worked worked and worked and worked worked really really hard 
to get where I am today. And the book just shares the tips. Shares, it just shows you how I've done it. It's like a warts and all. Here's the trick for uh, getting out of or wherever you are and, and coming to, to a new life. And I'm not rich now, but I'm not poor. I'm just really comfortable and happy and uh, love what I do for a living. So I don't consider that I do any work anymore. Ah, you're not working because the because what you're doing is stuff you enjoy, correct? Well, if, if my at the end of my day, because it's coming at the end of the day in the UK, is is having this great conversation with with you over in the states, then Rita. Then, and I've been interviewed this morning uh, for a new um, online TV show. Then I don't consider this a day of work, really. So, uh, it's mm -hmm. just been a great great day of fun having enlightened conversations with enlightened people. It's pretty damn good. It's funny how how we start to bring people, how people just appear in our lives at the right time with the right message. We talked about. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tom. I was about to say yeah, but you've got to understand is that you 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 came into my world because I reached out. Remember that? So we, we both we wrote both wrote these uh, programs for for Avenue, and I reached out because I know what you what you put out there comes back, but it comes back multiplied. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It, yes, we do need to reach out. I, I do remember a time that everybody in my life was, was negative and toxic and I had to make a conscious effort to start introducing more positive people to my life. Once I made the conscious effort, they appeared. We, we talked a bit about love, adding love to our life, and we talked a bit about when we don't have enough time, we really how to make more time, and even a bit about changing our thoughts. I think your listeners would not forgive me if I don't ask them the question that's so uppermost in so many people's minds how can they bring more money into their life without oh i don't know robbing banks and that we don't want them to rob banks do we, we don't want to rob banks no it's um, i've equated uh, money um to an as an energy so i tell the story about where money came about and how um before we had money we had barter and and then what in in the bartering days and there's a lot of barter going on these days as well but a lot in the bartering days what we do is we'd say well i've got this thing and it's worth this to me and i want that thing from you when we do a swap but the problem with that is that once we've swapped all our stuff for all the things that we might want then we've got no no way of storing it in in the winter months let's say that might not work we might need money for other things like fuel and this sort of stuff so uh, banks came up and trusted third parties arrived and we had this thing called money that got invented and on the UK banknotes it says I promise to pay the bearer that's what it says I promise to pay the bearer five pounds ten pounds twenty pounds and so money's all about a promise so all you've got to do to get more money in your world is that when someone pays you for something what they're doing is they're they, they're they're actually wanting you to promise that you'll deliver something for them so if someone pays you for something you deliver it if someone says, will you turn up for work and do a day's work? You promise to turn up. You promise to turn up on time. You promise to do a good day's work. And then what you do is you promise to come back the next day and don't uh, don't pull a sickie, as they might say over, over here. All right. So as long as we keep our promises, then we'll always be OK. Now, if you want to get more money into your world, what you do is you up your promise. So let's say you've got a job, you learn a new skill. You get a rise, you get a promotion. If you're working self-employed, what you do is you over deliver on what it is that someone's um, purchased from you. Or you learn a new skill, or you bundle new value in. So let's say if it's me, I might, um, any client that turns up for a healing session here, I'll give them a free book as well as the healing session. I'll give them access to some meditations as well as coming for the healing session. So they're always getting an over promise. And then what happens is, for me, is more clients turn up just when I need them. So just when I need some money, I don't have to worry about money. I don't have to think, oh, hang on, bank balance is going down. I just know that the right amount of money will come in at just the time that I need it. So I don't spend any time fretting about where the money's coming from because I know it's coming along just when I need it. That's so cool. I love <laughs> that. I live the same way, by the way. <laughs> well, you talked about being a board engineer and then a lot of creativity you were able to harness creativity. How can people who might be either bored or unhappy or lonely or just living a life they don't enjoy, how can they start to um, nurture create creativity so they know what steps to take to move their life along? 
Well, the creative process for me is one of fun and enjoyment and exploration. So I discovered a few things about um, uh, how our left and right brains work. And I was diagnosed when I was this board engineer as having no right brain and oh, all really? all left brain. And this lady showed me this exercise. It's a physical exercise called cross crawling. And uh, actually, there's um, I'll put a link underneath the, the blog to a uh, to a blog that shows some pictures of me doing this. But if you put cross crawling into into Google, you see what it's all about. It's like by just going um, like making lateral movements across your center line. What it does is mix the left and right um, uh, the fluid from the left and right brain together, and it energizes both halves of the the brain. Then I discovered this thing called mind mapping, and what a mind map does is allow us to have a structure which the right brain can own because it sees the whole vision, it sees the whole map. But but also that the left brain can actually get involved with because the left brain fills in the detail and I've discovered loads of ways of getting the left and right brain to work at the same time there's a little simple exercise uh, with alternate nostril breathing you can do before you start to create a test where you, you hold one nostril closed and breathe through the other nostril then you alternate all the other nostril closed and it gives the brain a boost you know and there's things like just making sure you drink enough water, make sure you've got the right foods. There's some brain foods you can get hold of, like nuts and sultanas that are great. And you give yourself every single chance to improve how your neurology works together. But you know the best ever way to be more creative, and that's just to hang out with more creative people, because all this stuff isn't what I call nicely infectious. So hang around with the cool people and you'll find your luck will change, you'll find your creativity changes, ideas will flow around. And you don't have to be worried about holding ideas in because the more ideas you give out there, the more that you'll get back. And I was worried, when I, when I first wrote my book on lightbulb moments, how to have lightbulb moments on demand, I thought, I'm gonna get overloaded with ideas. But what I find is, just the right ideas come in and if I get any other ideas that are no good for me I don't want to work on them I give them away freely uh, or I give them away in, in, in client sessions and uh, I don't have to worry about um, oh, I've just giving a great idea away because there's always a better idea just around the corner you know that's fabulous I, I, I feel like a lot of people listening to this would like to hang out with you more and of course they can buy any of, this is your 11th book, so they could buy any of your other 10 books or the new magic for a new era. But another way they can hang out with you is um, you and I both have made online courses with a company called Avenue. We have. And, they, and, and, and it, I took your course and I loved it. And what it is, it's 30 days long and you get three minutes of Tom talking every day for 30 days. He tells a story. He gives a lesson and then he tells you an action step to take. And if you want to hang out with Tom every day for 30 days, I'm telling you, by the time you finish this program, you will be a fan of his and your life will change. Um, Tom, uh, I know uh, now this is off from your book, but I hear in, in, when you speak, especially in that 30 day program, that uh, you pronounce disease as dis-ease. You always say it that way. You say he, somebody might have a dis-ease. Mm -hmm. you want to talk a little bit about health and dis-ease? Yeah, I think um, um, in, in my book, um, if you're ill, it just means you've allowed the illness to arrive. So the illness itself, you can almost see it as, a, as an entity. And, and it also brings a message. And that's, that's irrespective of how severe that illnesses or even how light that illness is as well it's just a, a sign that something's not right in your life so rather than seeing the the illnesses oh I must get a, a cream for this or I must get a pill for this or whatever which I'm not, I'm not saying that people shouldn't do you know our doctors and our nurses are fantastic uh, professionals but take the remedy but also take the learning as well and say well, you know what what is it in your life that you've been out of it uneasy about that's invited that illness to to visit you and again like the adversity you might have in your life it's a sign that something's not right and there's a lesson to be learned and and especially if you get something that that revisits as well so you get like uh, three colds on the trot or something like that or you you I don't know you 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 get a twisted ankle or you get a repetitive back strain it's a sign that something is not in balance in your life Okay, thank you for that. Um, let's get them really curious to look inside your book. 
Tom, tell us about breadcrumbs in your book. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I, I what I did, <laughs> what I did was um, I, when when I started looking into um, this new world, I, I kind of um, I came across some esoteric schools, and I studied with a couple of schools. And uh, in the esoteric tradition, uh, magic, the real, real magic, can only be uh, transmitted uh, word of mouth. And one of the reasons for that is that some of it can be used. Uh, for nefarious purposes um, so you can have white magic and, and black magic so um, and also it can be dangerous in the wrong hands as well so which is one of the reasons it's being kind of kept underground so this book that I've written is is, is safe magic but what I've done um, is something which let me explain this in a slightly different way what a lot of the occult schools do is they put what is called a blind in they put an, a deliberate mistake in so that the magic you get the appreciation of what it's about but if you might not be able to invoke it because there's a mistake somewhere in the uh, in the materials and they call this a blind and then when the student discovers the blind for themselves they learn it in a in a very fundamentally amazing way and understand what it's about now i put no blinds in this book at all but what i had done is put a few breadcrumbs for the people that are curious to learn different things so every chapter or a silo as i call them uh, they've got a breadcrumb for where you can look to to dig a bit deeper and to find out some more and I, i've actually got a, a program called awaken your inner magician that accompanies the book as well so people that advanced explorers that want to know more about this i'm going to take people on a year-long journey uh to uh to do something i call it um a software upgrade for the soul very cool yeah. why do you call the chapters silos i did notice that uh, the book the book's what i call channeled um, so when I get into this state where the the um, information just comes in, um, I I channel the, the words. So um, I, Tom gets out of the way, and I don't I don't know where I'm channeling these things from. It just comes in, and and I channeled that I had to call them silos. And one of the reasons a silo is something you can dive into uh, by itself. So let's say you you let's say you'd normally read a book from the first chapter through to the end chapter one of the things i say in this book is you can read it backwards so you can start at the end and then work backwards or if, if you get the book and you think you know what I'm, I'm okay on the money side of things i'm okay on the time management side of things but love is the thing that really is not uh, something i'm desperate for in my life just jump into the love silo straight off read that chapter or that 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 section of the book and then you can jump around to other parts of it so they're kind of standalone chapters there is a thread and there is a logic to them, but also they work uh, backwards, sideways, and upside down too. Very cool. Now, I I do not know that expression in magic about blinds, do, putting in a blind. Can you give an example of that, or would that be too difficult in an audio uh, recording? No, let's say. Um, uh, Let's let's use the word a spell. Now I'm I'm agnostic. I was raised a Roman Catholic. Um, I, I I work with people of all creeds and faiths, and I respect the um, the right of anyone to believe what they want to believe. And there are so many paths of return back to source. It's untrue. So I'm I'm very happy. Everyone takes their own own path. But the, a spell is no more than an, an incantation. So a spell could be. A, uh, I must, I must increase my bust, or something like that. You know, it's just, <laughs> so, so that that's a spell because you you're putting words into the air, and words have energy and they have a power. So, if I wanted to put a blind into something, I'd put an error in the words. So, I'd put an error in so that the the intent would still be there, but it wouldn't be quite as powerful as a as a spell. Oh, a little mistake here and there. Yeah, a little mistake, yeah, but nothing, not 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 to deceive the person. But just as a as a safety device, if you know what I mean, yeah. And I'll give let me give you an example of this. I talk about this. Um, I talk about the evolution of mankind and humankind in the book, and how uh, about two million years ago we discovered this amazing magical trick, which we don't even give a second thought to now. But um, we can um, we can control our throat with our minds and make noises that are, which are thoughts. So you can hear what I'm thinking right now and have similar thoughts to the ones I'm having oh you might be thinking this guy's a complete nutter that's fine that's that's allowable too but we don't give a second thought that what we're doing with our mind is controlling uh, an aspect of our body so our thoughts can radiate out through the uh, through the airwaves and we're just about to learn 
how to control our heart center and, our, and, the, and the trick of how I heal the budgie over Skype is to use my heart center so I've learned how to take my heart under conscious control and that's a nice magical trick isn't it being able to heal anywhere past present and future by controlling the energy from your heart but that same that same heart center could be used to make someone fall in love with you against their wishes so that's an example of how you can use magic for your own purposes to better yourself at the detriment to someone else or you can use it unconditionally to heal and to love uh, Tom you're leading us into a life of power and joy I love this um, be before we wrap up, I want to be sure everybody knows how to access information from you. But first, let me ask: Do you want to? Do you want to? Is there anything we didn't talk about that you'd like to share with our listeners, or um, any closing thoughts you'd like to share? I think the, the the main thought I'd like to share is that my view of all of this stuff is that it should be free, and that if you learn something magical then we've got this idea of the magical magic circle over in the uk which is the sleight of hand type magic or sleight of mind magic and they have this tradition that it's all kept um kept secret but for me what happens is as you share magic more magic comes into your world and what i learned is magic doesn't come from us it comes through us and by passing it along and sharing the magical tricks with other people more magic comes your way so that works for me. It's going to work for people I'm passing the magical tricks on to. So i just like to leave with that thought, really, is that this magic is to be shared. It's not to be kept secret, and it's not to be kept in dark, dusty volumes in the Vatican Library somewhere, as I've heard it might be. It's to be shared, but shared, shared safely and shared with love and shared to the betterment of all mankind and for good old Mother Earth, too. Ah, fabulous. Lovely, Tom. Well, um, we're going to talk uh, about how they can get your book, but I'd like to also mention the 30-day uh, online courses because that's how I got to know you, and we got to, I got to hear your voice every day for 30 days. It's a little three-minute thing of Tom's, and it's just lovely. Um, I, I also have programs on procrastination, clutter, and paper clutter, but Tom, tell them the title of yours. Yours has such a cool new title. Well, it's, it's, as we're recording this, it's just about to be re-entitled. So depending on when you see the site, you'll, you'll, see, oh. you'll see one or two titles. The, the title at the moment is Slowing Down as the New Speeding Up. But we're just about to re-entitle it Mindful, Kindful and Timeful, which are kind of cool. So uh, you'll find it under one of those, <laughs> under one of those labels on the avenue.com site. Mindful, Kindful and Timeful. I just yeah. love that. It's cute, so that's isn't it? A Avenue is spelled A V A N O O dot com, and you go there and you can sign up for to either hear Tom's charming British accent or my flat Chicago accent. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about your book, Tom. How can they get either new magic for a new era, or you know, I bet a lot of listeners would be interested in a few of your other books. Would you like to mention a few that might be uh, good for people who are new coming to your writings? Yeah, well, if you if you like um, if you like magic, um, I wrote two books earlier on in my writing career called Flavors of Thought, Recipes for Fresh Thinking, and Planes of Being. And these two books contemporize some of the old wisdom. Uh, uh, rest, uh, Flavors of Thought actually deconstructs all those mirrors of thoughts in our heads, and Planes of Being describes us as spiritual beings on a human journey. It's quite a magical book. For people that like a bit of philosophy and fun, then I wrote two books. These two books I, I wrote and published within a month. They're called This We Know and This We Are, and they uh, talk about a different kind of world that we can all live in and how what we imagine right now is going to lay the, the foundation blocks for what our descendants are going to enjoy hundred years from now so what we do right now is is kind of key uh, for, for leaving a better world behind for people that come after us that might even include us if you believe in reincarnation so it makes a lot of sense to uh, to leave the world in a better place than when we came in in case we've got to come back and do it all over again if that's your bag and I've also written some some lovely delightful fictional tomes a hundred years of Ermintrude is written in poetry about a lady that lives to a hundred but it's that she, she lives a life backwards I wrote a book about the future history of the earth called Soul Wave and last year I wrote um, 
22 short stories called The German Atrix and Other Tall Tales. So I kind of, I, as, a, as a writer, I love uh, learning a new style and writing in different formats and stuff like that. So I, I'd sort of dive in into poetry and then do a bit of short story, then I'd do a bit of science fiction, a bit of philosophy, a bit of esoterics, uh, and then this latest book, a bit of magic. So depending on what your bag is, uh, there's, there's, I hope there's something for everyone in there. And in the middle of that, I also wrote a book on getting over writer's block and how you can get ideas off the top of your head as well. So the whole mix of stuff in there. Uh, you truly are a renaissance man. And um, are all your books available through Amazon? And yeah, pretty much. Uh, the short stories are, 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 are Kindle only. Everything else is uh, Kindle and, and print, but all through Amazon, yeah. Okay. And um, oh, oh, and how can they access those free meditations you talked about? Where would they get those from? Just go to tomevans.co and you'll see in the top bar, uh, either on the home page you see a link to it, or on the top bar you'll see a, a meditations tab and all the meditations, the free ones and also the ones that are uh, quite low low cost uh, are all there. And on that note, by the way, uh, I've got two sets of meditations that are available free for people that are suffering as well. So I've got a set of meditations that help people with PTSD, OCD and ADHD. They're available free if you're suffering from one of those conditions. I've got a set of meditations that help people reduce the onset of um, dementia. They're free if you've got that. And also if anyone's got a, a life shortening condition, I've got some meditations that help you get the best out of the rest of your life. So I've been put in a fortunate position where um, I can um, run these philanthropic uh, activities and uh, I'm blessed to do it. And I love sort of sharing this with people that uh, need a bit of a boost. Uh, Tom, I'm grateful for your the blessing of your you sharing your wisdom, but also your generosity. You've been extraordinarily generous, and I haven't known you long, but the times I've known you, you've just been so generous and so willing to share and help people. So thank you for that. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? No, the other thing I'd like to say to people is go out there and share the magic. Share the magic. Okay, this is Rita Emmett interviewing Tom e Evans. I'm in the Chicago area. He's in the UK. I think it's magic that we're able to do this. Thank you again, Tom. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Thank you, Rita. Bye.